Welcome to these fascinating islands of love, the Trobron Islands. This is one of the legendary areas in Papua New Guinea which you can visit if you're anticipating a cruise around the Milan Bay province to the north coast of Papua New Guinea on the Melanesian Discoverer. There are lots of places which you can visit and dive in this most beautiful, untouched, underwater wonderland. And I'm telling you, you'll never regret it when you're here. This is Science of the Times. Welcome to this Sunday's edition. We come to you from the Trobron Islands and will bring you reports on how we spend Christmas in this part of the Pacific during our 2002 Christmas expedition on the Melanesian Discoverer, cruising from south coast to the north coast. Trobron Islands is locally referred to as the Trobs. It is comprised of four main islands known as Kirawina, Vakuta, Kitava and Kailiuna. They all lie to the north of the Deantrocastics group. Geographically, the islands appear differently from the rest of the Milan Bay province in that they are almost entirely flat. The Trobrian group of islands was named after Dennis de Trobriens, an officer on the Deantrecastrix expedition. The group is also delimited by spectacular scenery of the unspoiled coral reefs and islands arising abruptly from the ocean view at a height of approximately 50 meters. Others lie just above the surface of the water. About 36,000 people live in the tribes. They are famous for their artwork on carvings and unique cultural practices displayed during the Kula Ring Festival and Yam rituals. Kiriwina is the largest in the group and that is where most communications and economical activities are cited. First World War, a Polish anthropologist, Bronisław Malinowski, conducted research on the islands.
According to his interpretation, Trobron was a romantic paradise in the Pacific. That was how the title Island of Love came to be. But today the locals say the title reflects their friendliness and cultural welcome to visitors. Sailing around the tropes on the luxurious cruises of the Melanesian discoverer, you can be sure to get a glimpse of the fascinating things about Trobran Islanders. Our exotic Christmas expedition brought us to the Trobrin waters on the early hours of Tuesday the 24th of December. And the time was just perfect for the captain to lower the anchor at Nambogueta Island for a short stop which bestowed it as time to resuscitate after a long night of rough seas. The morning was cold and wet, but didn't stop the visiting tourists from exploring the island. Some of the tourists got onto the shopping list, while others went for a short walk on the beach. Our next destination scheduled for the day was Kitava Island, east coast of Kiriwina. The island was just an ideal location for an overnight anchorage as we were a few hours to Christmas Eve. As we disembarked for the afternoon walk, we were overwhelmed by the decorated wooden post erected above the sea. This traditional sign signifies that there is plenty of food in the village prepared for feasting. And we were delightful to spend two nights here and join the party. Just across the narrow passage where we anchored lies an uninhabited Isle of Nuratu, portraying beautiful scenery of the coral reefs, tidal pools, and an immaculate white sandy beach, which we could not refuse the chance of swimming and snorkeling around the island. Back on the ship, the crew were busy decorating and preparing for Christmas dinner. In the evening, we all enjoyed the delicious seaweed soup and the tasty roasted turkey.
The next day was Christmas Day, and we all geared up for a two hours walk to Lalela village where the feasting took place. We were divided into two groups, one group taking the longest route and the other the shortest. The best known artifacts in the province are the Trobrin carvings. Certain villages specializes in certain styles and types of carvings. In Kitava, most tourists bought walking sticks and the symbolic yam houses carved in ebony wood and decorated with fine designs of pearl shells. Upon our arrival in La Lela village, we could see food decorations erected in the middle of the village and that engulfed us with emotions of celebrating a ceremonial dinner. It's, our, uh, it's very hard because here the ground is uh, hard so what they do is they... This is the main village on Kitawa Island and all the people congregated here for the Christmas celebrations. The village was quiet though as the people were getting organized for the afternoon activities. That's very nice. Very nice. Like, clearly, clearly I had to buy something. So, um. <laughs> About 1,000 people live in this village. After allowing us time to recover, the formalities of the celebrations began. The church service was conducted by a local pastor. Soon after the service ended, food was distributed and traditional dances were performed.
The Trobrinders are very flexible dancers, and this occasion was just an appropriate time to entertain and show off their unique dances to the visiting guests. Likewise, the people also appreciated the company of the tourists and were privileged to have the presence of the Intergovernment Relations Minister, Sir Peter Bata. <laughs> Me or say me no got to put a Christmas present on you, pala. That's all. I think um, plenty of year got penis. Me buy him some of a school desk on you. Uh, two of a week he got penis. Let me bring him some of a more desk. Behind, let me help him you put a more again on school. I'm not going to use for the size of boy number seven. Pere Merry Christmas. I'm just going to go about Kungolis and go to Sisa. I don't miss desk about me masses. Pere na press school. I got to two very bago call about press school two very tower state of Mother Day. This is something in me way belong talking. Thank you or can't talk to you, pal. Best I'm going to make a little bit of 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 Mara Kurwata Koite to Pasini Memes Kita to Tore, Ivaka Walisi Kine, the San Mosa was in Kolis Vere Koitam Corners and Komana Boy. Work long me and me hardly click because he got some province in Agrippa or St. Milne Bay, Southern Highlands, now Bougainville. He got plenty of bugger up coming on this pillar hop. Now that's when we come and sit down with a place blowing you for me. Look, look, all this pillar. Talk, sit down, I work long one time, me Hamamas. Passenger, not touristy coming out on Papua New Guinea. Well, have my too long come to Milan Bay because any place, any good place, place long sit down. You know, got this particular kind passing fight, no gun, no using this particular passing no good long, making passenger or steal this particular kind something. So, me have my too long. Long thank him, you pula. Or some line long Kitava, line long Lelela, line long also gonna hop inside long province long you pula. Long look out on this particular good particular passing. Me have my too now behind. I think next year by me come back again. I'll sit down one time, you pula. Long celebrate him Christmas. Marago to Vera, Ramasawa, Togo Passendi, Smosa, and Rad Memes, Nikines, the Buner, San Bon, the Gelvey Rao Sisu. Finish the top of me, me talk, Kaga talk, that's the point of quiet. Bagum Clay, Ragutto Vesquem, Balia Ragutto Quaver, Bon Quaya Comata. Bebona. Amato Quaya. Thank you very much for making our holiday absolutely perfect. We really appreciate you making us feel very welcome. And thank you, I will give you a big hand and thank you very, very much. Thank you.
The next day we headed for Kaibola. Kaibola is a village located to the north coast of Kiruwina Island, about 30 kilometers away from the district headquarters in Losuya. The people on this island are very smart entrepreneurs and they will be pressing on you to buy the artifacts as soon as you step out of the boat. This was where we had to brush up our shopping list for the Trobrin carvings. Variety of artifacts ranging from bowls, tools, yam houses to walking sticks were displayed on the beach market. Seashells and baggies were also among the favorable items. It was difficult though as the prices for yam houses varied from 150 to 500 kina, while the walking sticks went from 200 to 500 kina. However, there was room to negotiate for Christmas prices. The best carvings were made from ebony. In the Trobrians, a master cover is a position of high prestige and a role bestowed upon a person at his early childhood. This also applies to the dancers, singers, and other significant roles in the village. As we ventured into the village, the tourists had time to mingle around with the locals and try out their skills on the Trobrin cricket game. This is Kaibola village in the Trobrin Islands. Currently we are touring the village looking at some artifacts to buy and we have come across some interesting things that people are doing in this village. Uh, this old man is going to tell us what these two ladies are doing. Uh, this is uh, local art. Uh, from Kaibola village. Uh, these women here are selected to do that uh, um, local art. Um, it is called Doba. Doba in the island of Kiruwina is our local currency. And uh, this Doba now and before we can buy store goods indirectly we can get on PMB and pay our PMBs out of this doba. But in the past, this doba here is used for paying our expenses towards our debts and paying for our um, uh, memorial feast uh, called Sagari. And nowadays, this doba is very powerful. One of this doba now costs five kina. Do you use this to pay bright price in the village? Yes, but we use in very big uh, amount. Like uh, we put them in a very big uh, woven um, coconut basket, and uh, one woven basket, coconut basket, might uh, contain 
Uh, this doba is about 3,000 pieces. What is it made out of? It is made out of banana tree. To, to have this uh, one piece of doba is ready, uh, it, we can cut it one leaf from the banana. This is a leaf of banana. Uh, th there's quite a lot of banana, but we use only one type of banana. We produce this doba. So one, one leaf will, will, be, will be not enough to make a doba. It might take about five of these leaves. And once we get this leaf, we bring it, and the women uh, take the first layer out. Then after taking the first layer out, it comes to uh, that. Then after that, in the evening, I mean, in the daytime, they put it to dry for a couple of days or week. When it's ready, it, it becomes white and uh, the level that we want to the quality that so the women then collect it and bring it and they sort of iron it. Then we use a special string to tie it. Then after tying it, 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 it stays like this, but uh, the women come and they sort of uh, um, turn it back. Then leave it for a week and turn it back and it becomes to the completion. So it takes about a, about a month to finish, say, about a 50 of this. Invent that one. So instead of women going with a shell like this, they already carved a special flat timber. And that design marks the, uh, our uh, tabalu or paramount chief's uh, design. This is an uh, emblem of uh, Kirwina. Is this currency used throughout the Trobran Island? This sort of uh, currency, local currency, is used throughout the Trobran Island. The doba is still used today as a negotiable currency to buy goods from the market and trade stores. As we move further to another village, more artifacts and colorful grass skirts were displayed. They were selling at much better prices and the young tourists couldn't wait to try out their costumes. After a top day of shopping, we headed back for the ship and sailed towards Kailiuna. In all the places visited, Tawema village makes no difference in the style of houses and village setup of the Trobrians. The villages are laid out in a similar pattern which could be clearly seen when walking into the villages. The houses are built in such a way to accommodate one person 
and for this reason young girls and boys live in their own houses other than their parents. The most significant features seen in all the villages were the yam houses. They are highly decorated and built like skyscrapers in the center of the village and are surrounded by sleeping houses. Yams are far more than a staple food in the Trobrians. They are also regarded as rituals, a sign of prestige and a tie between villages and clans. The harvest begins in the month of June and it is acknowledged in the form of a festival. During this time, all Trobrenders come together to display their harvest and traditional dances like the famous tapioca dance is performed. Games like cricket or tug of war are also played. Trobrin Islanders have a strong Polynesian personality and a matrilineal society. The society is strictly hierarchical between marriages distinguished in the kind of work each person performed. Before leaving the Trobrins, we visited Simsimla Island on the western coast of the group. We have arrived here in the western part of the Trobrin Islands and this place is called Simsim Village. Around here, as you, if you look around here, the place seems really dry. 
and there is nothing much happening here. There is no food to eat, no water to drink, because their wells have dried up, and in the village there are only six tanks, but the tanks are empty. There were about 170 people on the island and rarely received aid from the Million Bay Provincial Government. Even there wasn't any sign of EM houses in the village. According to the former village councillor, Raka Dubunadoga, they have been feeding on boiled mangoes, coconut and fish for almost six months since their gardens were destroyed during the dry season. Sun come up now, strong plateau. Also, I'm like, all the tapioca, cow, cow, and I dry peas. I like short, all the time. It takes me like now three months. Now, me pala adding by go more yet. Now, one or two, it go down. A good plateau, and Mr. Bata, I come up to the island of Mipala, helping me pala to lick lick water. Now, one time, lick lick zoom, me pala go pine him, some pala kai kai lo, men, lion, lo, lo suya. So, that's not a problem, but I stop yet, also, lo, sim sim island. The village is built on the strip of flat land at the foot of the mountain, and they depend on the other island to cultivate their yams and other root vegetables. I think we already knew that there's a problem out here. We didn't realize the magnitude of the problem. Um, in 1997, these islands and uh, the other islands in Milne Bay, particularly islands of um, Ira, uh, Gara, Minister for Intergovernment Relations and Bougainville Affairs, Sir Peter Bata, especially visited the villages to assess the situation and assisted them with some liters of drinking water. We, we can't give them a lot of help here. What we'll do is uh, fill as many containers that they've got, which we've already done, so they have uh, immediate access to good water. We've also given them some fuel to enable them to run their boat to Lucia to pick up some supplies and uh, get the message through to the people at Lucia, through the um, district office, that the people are very short of food. Um, that's all we can do today, but um, as I say, uh, once we go back, once I get back on board the ship, we'll be sending faxes and telephone calls and I'll see what I can do from that point. There was sign of relief and this child couldn't miss that chance. A lot of children like her have died because of no food and proper drinking water in the village. The only well which supplies the village with fresh drinking water is now very dirty and full of mosquitoes. This is the only well that supplies 170 people that lives on Simsim Island. During the dry season, the water level went really low and the water is now dirty. It is very difficult for the people now to get fresh water for drinking and cooking. The water is, the color of the water is very green and it's not good for human being to survive on. And what the people are doing their drinking from coconut trees and eating mango fruits. Six 1,000 gallon water tanks are sitting in the village for nearly three months empty. Even coconut trees and mangoes will soon run out. It is only once a year these remote islands are visited and contacted. Otherwise, they still enjoy the peacefulness of this unique place in our country.
Uh, this is made worse by the fact that they've got no um, food gardens left. The tapioca is finished, yams, um, uh, cow cow have all finished. Um, so they're short of food and they're basically totally reliant on mango that are here at the moment. And when that finishes, um, there will be no food apart from perhaps some fish, which will provide the protein, but it certainly won't sustain life for very long. Um, uh, we have come through here on the Discoverer. Um, I wanted to stop here to see how it was. That's why I've come ashore today. And uh, we'll supply them with whatever water we can find in containers for them. But this is only a short-term solution. Um, I will be going back and I'll make a, a bid. There's no need to send an assessment team out here. I know the problem. I know the population. And what uh, problem is here in um, SimSim, you can uh, multiply this by the other outlying islands, uh, not only here, but perhaps right throughout Papua New Guinea. The El Nino effect is a, has a very long effect. And I must say that it's not just the island areas that have been suffering. We've got other areas in the highlands. Um, the frost affected areas we thought uh, wasn't going to be too severe because they had rain uh, immediately afterwards. But since that first lot of rain, there's been no rain and all the gardens in the highlands, particularly in the frost uh, hit areas, are, are very bad. And um, we have sent another assessment team up there to see what we can do about it. In the meantime, we're asking everyone, to, to, the communities, to work together and support each other in being able to, to uh, share food. For instance, uh, the islands in the Dontra Costa group have got um, uh, good gardens because they've got plenty of rain. And uh, by sharing their food with the people here on Simsim, Sim, their brothers and sisters, it will uh, help sustain life and make life more comfortable for people. And after all, this is Christmas and we should all be giving. And, uh, so we'll be appealing to the different communities where there are gardens, where there, are, where there is food, uh, to be able to help them. In the meantime, we'll be seeking assistance from donors, which has already begun, to try and uh, uh, provide some basic food to the people and certainly try to get more water to the people. And uh, that's what we're doing here today.